how does this play out in life? An example of this would simply be a meditator moves into craving and clinging via the eye sense door. The eye impersonally meets color and form and eye consciousness arises. The meeting of these three is eye contact. Whip contact as condition, eye craving arises. With craving as condition, clinging arises and so forth on down the line of cognition. Now this happens in the very same way in reference to each of the sense doors. You can refer to Majima Nikaya number 38, sections 19 and 20. If you haven't had the dependent origination class yet, you have not covered all of the line of cognition just yet, but sit tight because it's coming up. So clinging puts more energy into the line of human cognition, into personally grasping and the idea of personal attachment, and it keeps this going stronger than just the initial jump start with craving. Is that right? That's right. Clinging is an expansion of the initial tension and tightness first caused by craving. So where does this go next? It moves into the habitual tendency link, which was bawa, which we talked about before, which is what uh, we looked at this past time. And this link shows us why we really are not as alive as we were when we were young. <laughs> because it will show us where we get caught up in reacting instead of responding. And we're living from the past, not the present. It can be a trigger source for war on any level if it is not recognized and dealt with properly. That's the end of the paper on this. Now, I want to open it up. And if you have questions at this point, you can ask me questions. But then I also want to show you where a couple of uh, these um, points are in the text that you've all heard. If you've done the online retreats or done a personal retreat, you have run into probably the Madhupandika Sutta, for instance. And that one, that one gives you, that's number 18, and gives you an example of um, how talking about clinging is in here, but it's in, an, in there in another way. So first I wanna ask you if you have any questions so far, anybody? Hmm? No questions. <laughs> Did you get basically, you got what I said, basically. You got, you understand it. It's pretty clear. Okay, if there's no questions yet, I want to take you to the Madhupindika Sutta and find the, which I call the War and Peace Sutta, basically. Because this sutta is very pronounced. It explains to people who are sitting down at a peace conference how war starts and how peace can happen. They just never seem to read it. <laughs> we have to do something about that, okay. So here, in section eight, monk, as to the source through which perceptions and notions, thoughts and ideas, are born of mental proliferation beset a man. Now this is when you think of something you're going through an experience and you start to react and you're actually taking something from the past and playing it out in this situation the way it played out in the other situation. You're gonna react the same way. And the reason you're going to do that is because the perceptions and notions started going on in your mind. You started perceiving this as looking like something in the past and you had the notions that were born of mental proliferation. And what is mental proliferation? That's actually what clinging is called in this sutta, mental proliferation, a runaway thinking process in your mind, 
which is covering ideas, concepts, things you remember from the past, how you reacted in the past, and they beset a man. They disturb. The word besets an old English word to beset a man or woman is to beset your mind, is to get disturbed. If nothing is found when you think about these, if nothing found there is nothing, if nothing is found there to delight in, welcome and hold on to, this is the end of underlying tendency to lust of the underlying tendency to aversion, of the underlying tendency to views, means personal views, taking these personally, of the underlying tendency to doubt, of the underlying tendency to conceit, that this is what's happening is me, it's mine, it's my fault, I'm gonna blame myself, go cry. And of the underlying tendency to desire for being. And here we say, if you change being and you say desire to react, your desire for reaction just fizzles out, it fades away. And of the underlying tendency to ignorance, this is the end of resorting to rods and weapons of quarrels, brawls, disputes, recrimination where you, you, um, someone has said something absolutely criminally disgusting to you and you're going to do it right back. Recrimination is recrimination, malicious words and false speech. Here these evil unwholesome states will cease without remainder. They'll start to cease. They'll stop. And they start to stop because you started to stop this mental proliferation. And this mental proliferation seems to be, uh, to be uh, it seems to be one of the things students can identify with pretty well. It is a little difficult sometimes to, um, to identify with um, craving and see that one really clear, okay? But it is not difficult to feel the runaway mind. That one we can usually no start noticing pretty early in our training. And this is what uh, the Blessed One said, and the Sublime One rose with a seat, he went and left his dwelling. After this time, what happens is Maha Kajana really explains the whole thing just the way we have explained it. And he goes through and he's talking about the danger of this mental proliferation. They go and they get him. And then first, I think he takes a moment and chews them out and says, you know, I would be at some point in here, he says, I would, I would be remiss if I did not scold you because you had the master teacher right in front of you and you didn't ask a question. <laughs> you let him go to bed, which is bad, bad timing. <laughs> okay. But then he says, uh, surely, you know, um, you can tell us what this means. Could you help us? And then they, he says, uh, yes, I, I can help you. And he says, um, when he went in, okay, so he runs him through. Dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. There it is. The meaning of these three is contact. With contact as condition, I'm reading at section 16. When one, what one feels, one perceives or names it. And what one perceives, that one thinks about, remembers what it's like in the past. What one thinks about, then that one me mentally proliferates. What you thought of from the past, you pull it up, you start thinking about it. And with what one has mentally proliferated as the source, then, you start thinking, look at what I did last time. Perceptions and notions born of mental proliferation beset a man. It starts to rev you up like you got revved up before in a similar situation. You start to get heated and hot and irritated. And when you're beset with respect to the past, the future, and present forms cognizable by the eye, then you start to get ready to do a reaction. He takes you in the sutta through what happens with ears and sounds, nose, this is odors, tongue and flavors, body and tangibles, mind and mind objects, and takes you through all the way to that. And then he says, now, when there is the eye of form and eye consciousness, it is possible for you to point out the manifestation of contact. Is that true? 
that I'm teaching you now, that if there's an I, a form, an I conscious that comes up, then that point of manifestation, you are you are manifesting a point point out the manifestation of contact. It means those three pieces always lead to contact coming up. That's all that saying. And when there is the manifestation of contact, it is possible to point out the manifestation of feeling. And when there is the manifestation of feeling, it is possible to point out the manifestation of perception. You'll notice right at the point, you will notice where you name it. That, that's the perception part. And when there is the manifestation of perception, then it is possible to point out the manifestation of thinking. And there's the, that's the clinging, thinking. And when the manifestation of thinking is possible to point out the manifestation of besetment by perception and notions born of this mental proliferation. So mental proliferation is an extended explanation of what thinking is in section 17. That's what it's doing. Okay. Then it says it goes through each one of the other sense doors again. But then he says, when, but when there is no I, no form, no I consciousness, it is impossible to point out this manifestation of contact. And when there is no manifestation of contact, it's impossible for you to point out feeling. And when there's no manifestation of feeling, it's impossible to point out the manifestation of perception and you can't perceive it. And then there's no manifestation of perception. If it, it's impossible to point out the manifestation of thinking, you won't notice it. You won't be able to see it, identify it. And then when there is no manifestation of thinking, it's impossible to point out the manifestation of this besetment, getting disturbed by the perceptions and notions that are born out of this mental proliferation. So then he does that one with all of the different sense doors. He says, friends, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, wait a minute. I don't want to read the part about, okay, well, he's going to, you know, in 19, he's going to give you the summary of the section 19. When the blessed one rose from his seat, when he went into his dwelling after giving a summary in brief, without expounding on the detailed meaning, that is, monk, as to the source through which perceptions and notions born of mental proliferation beset a man. That's what really grabs you. If nothing is found there to delight in, if you have gotten to a level where you don't get overly delighted in something, you don't welcome it, you don't hold on to it, that's the end of the underlying tendency to lust end of the underlying tendency to aversion to, end of the underlying tendency to personal views, because you're not taking anything personal anymore, of the underlying tendency to doubt. You just don't have any doubts anymore because this is all leaving. It's all fading away. This tendency is to be like this. And the ten underlying tendency to conceit doesn't come up because you're not ab absorbed in, in this being personally you. Of the underlying tendency of, to desire for being or for reacting, you don't have the urge to react back at all. It's like you're standing in I, one student. I know I've told you about her. She was on the staircase coming down and the family was having some, kind of an argument. And she just stood there suddenly realized it's not touching me. She stood there outside what was happening in the room in front of her. And she said, I watched it just like a movie. It's the underlying tendency for reaction was totally gone and totally uninterested in stepping down the last step and walking into that of the underlying tendency to ignorance. It's gone because she understands it. It's gone. And this is the end then of her, for instance, going in that room and resorting to rods and weapons and quarrels and brawls and disputes and recrimination, malicious words between people and false speech and lying. And here these evil unwholesome states cease without remainder. 
And she called me up and she said, what happened? <laughs> I said, what happened is you took your practice home and you kept using it. And the brain, one thing I've noticed about this practice, the brain likes the Brahma Viharas. The brain feels like it's a comfortable sofa that you put in the living room up here where it lives. <laughs> it's comfortable and I like this stuff. The brain decides this. And once it knows you want to keep doing this, it will help you because it's comfortable. Because and when it's comfortable for your brain, it's comfortable for your heart. When it's comfortable for your heart, it's comfortable for your lungs. When it's comfortable for your lungs, it's comfortable for your stomach and your intestines. When this is comfortable, this has to not just be involved in meditation. And what we talk about, it's running the whole entire body. And now when I tell you this, what are you witnessing? Nama Rupa. The deeper understanding of Nama Rupa change your mind and it changes everything in your life including your body your relationships and everything i understand the detailed meaning of the summary to be this way friends and if you wish to go to the blessed one and ask him about the meaning of it you may certainly do so and that's how he ends it so we have this place here of course where you're talking about the clinging and what it is is the thinking and it's the runaway thinking. And runaway thinking is mental prol proliferation. So see, when I came into this, I, I had all kinds of questions back in 2000. And one of the things was, why did they make that a wheel? And if it is spinning, what's pushing it? And so this is the energy that you're putting into the wheel to push it. And that's the example of what the, these links are showing you, how you build it up, how it happens. But let's not run away with this. Let's not say, well, then, you know, I shouldn't see anymore. I shouldn't hear or smell or taste or touch. No, don't do that. <laughs> okay, don't do that. That wasn't the lesson. And the pendulum, lots of people show you a pendulum. They show it to you on a clock. So here's the 12 and the three and the six and the nine. They want you to become balanced. This is what the Buddha wanted you to discover that as a human being, you can become balanced and you can have everything working from here. You can have everything working from here, there, okay? And some people are just way over here, just hiding. And some people are way over there going crazy, working like crazy out there, but still suffering a whole lot, okay? And and the thing is that, um, how do we do that? Let me see. Whoops. <laughs> I, I haven't been here in a while. Um, there we go. The thing is that you want it, this to, um, now you got to go back here, right? You got to concentrate on this. I love this stuff. <laughs> I want that one, and I want the color, let's do this one. So here is you, when this is hanging down, you, you want it, it's, they'll push you hard to get you from here to here. That's what they're trying to do. Get you balanced. And from here, you can fall into, guess what? Cessation. You can, but you can't if you're over here or you're over there. And what they're doing is trying to push you from here when you don't know anything and you're in ignorance and you start learning, but don't get confused because you'll end up passing that by and swinging all the way over to there. And they want to pull you back to here. This is where you want to land. That's all this is about. Balance and discovering a world without me. <laughs> you know, it's kind of... You know, and that's why some people think, oh my gosh, this is really frightening. The pendulum is swinging like this. Do you see one of those things where you get the little balls or one of them is where it just swings like that? See, it swings. How long will it take you to get balanced so it stops swinging like that or like that? 
you know, you think you're really cool and you have no problem. And then all of a sudden you're fighting with somebody and then you think you're all cool and you're just fine and you go to sleep. And then all of a sudden you're fighting with somebody <laughs> and you come back down here. You want to get from here. This, you know, I have this thing is backwards. I don't know what's wrong with this. I, I think I have to look at this for a minute because I've been getting seasick. Wait a second. I know how to do this. Wait a minute. <laughs> this is, there you go there. Okay. Now I think I'm going to feel better. Okay. Now let's see what happens now. Okay. Okay. You can go out here. I'm back. Oh, that's such a relief. <laughs> see, now that was, I was, I was winding up to getting to mental proliferation about that <laughs> from here. I was putting my hand up in front of myself, but it was over here. Yeah, that can't make a mind. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, what you're attempting to learn how to do is let go of irritations, relax, take a pause, find out what's essential in a situation, look at that, decide how to respond, do not jump in. And when somebody is confronting you, you see, I was actually in a talk recently with actually a bunch of different monastics and and in the conversation, the question was, if somebody comes who uh, looks like, um, you know, they're not a good person and they, they uh, should you confront the person? And I didn't know why they were all saying confront. And then they were actually talking about there isn't much you can do in this situation to change the person. And that was a little bothering me too, you know, but I, I'm sort of spoiled because in the text, it makes it pretty clear. We cannot change another person. And you never confront a person. You, you listen to the person and make a decision what to do to help them see how it would be better in a wholesome side or not. But to confront is, don't confront anybody right now in the world, please. It's not safe right now <laughs> to confront people. And certainly if you do visit the United States, do not confront anyone, anyone, okay? And actually don't talk much because if you do say the wrong thing, it could be, well, <laughs> it could get pretty angry because it's not sort of our free speech over there is, is sort of disappearing, you know? And you can watch this happening, it's crazy. But anyway, what you want to do is work to balance yourself, to come down and rest here. That's where you want to be. And then you want to leave and turn around and watch what's left. And then if you do that, you're setting up the conditions that are correct for falling into cessation. If anybody is doing or confronting or attempting to make anything happen, it's a sure shot. You're not going to go down the path easily. You're going to have to figure out each level that you get to. You're going to have to back up and see why is this so difficult? And why am I so stuck? It's because you are still there. So think of being a cat and take a look at how cats just sit and they just watch. Till they decide to do something. So this is about.